Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, people. How many people are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. David said, I was glad when they told me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Have you had a great week? Have you been victorious? Amen. Now, before we do anything else, I want to pray for some, for some people. I believe the Lord directed me this week. I want to pray for someone, everyone that if you are working and your, your income is below one aim, one million, would you run to the front? And let's believe God for increase. If you're working and you are below one million, the Lord directed me to pray for you this week. And um, you are going to see an increase. How many, how many of you believe that he has the final word? The final word. He speaks last. Other people can speak, but when God speaks, it is a crazy case. It is done, accomplished. The files are burnt because God has spoken. But the Lord told me, pray for my people because the Lord wants to bring an increase, even starting this year. By, um, by the time we enter next year, many of you, you are going to... <laughs> because the Lord has spoken. Raise up your hand. Father, I thank you for your children. These are the ones that you died for. They are faithful in your house, in their giving, in fellowship, in the assembling of the saints. They are givers, they are ministers, and you know them and you love them. Lord, you spoke to us in Isaiah 60 that you are about to increase us, you are about to expand us. Lord, I lift up every individual raising their hands standing before you the father of glory the father and the captain of our salvation i pray holy spirit as you spoke to me that you are going to release millionaires and billionaires in this congregation i dedicate and i bring this a group of people before you and i pray over each one of them that starting this year starting this month of june oh god May there be increase in Jesus' name. May there be open doors. May there be expansion. May there be oh, elevation in the name of Jesus. For you are the Lord our uh, increase. For you are Jehovah Jaila. Not our salaries, not our jobs, not our business. You are the Lord our provider. Lord, I pray for each one of them. Whatever barrier that has been standing before them, I break every sitting. I break every boundary that the enemy put over them. The spirit of poverty, the spirit of lack, debts and loans over them in Jesus' name. I declare the blessings of God. I declare the blessings that come from the blood of Jesus. I declare the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. I declare the blessing that he adds no solo on each one of them. May they never lack anything good. May, they, may you give them more than enough. I speak increase over you. I speak increase over you. I declare doors to be open for you. I declare the gates of heaven to open for you. May the Lord expand you to the right and to the left, to the north and to the south. May the Lord bless you in the city, but also in the country. May you never lack again in Jesus' name. May you become a giver, a generous person, a, a blessing to your family, to your church, and to your nation. I declare that over you in Jesus' name. Every bound, every boundary broken, every limitation broken in the name of Jesus. 
May the Lord expand your tent. May the Lord give you food in season. May the Lord give you food to eat, seed to sow in due season. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mark this day. It will be historical for you. Amen. You may. As you go back, please find someone. Maybe you know, you see them, but you don't know who they are. One person, greet and introduce yourself to one person before you take your seat. Let's build some relationships here. I said someone you don't know. <coughs> Amen. You may now take your seat. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Did you have a great week? Amen. We thank God for everything he's doing in our lives, in the, in the life of this church, in our community, and also in our nation. A lot of great things are happening all over the place. It's, um, it's up to you to pick where you want to look. You can actually... Look to the negative and curse your nation or curse your, your neighborhood. Or you can pick the good ones and say, God is good. Amen. Sometimes it's good to wake up early to see the sunrise. You see, sometimes when you see nature, when you see the sunrise, it changes the way you perceive a day. And sometimes it's good to sit out on your porch and see the sunset. Some of you don't never look up. The Bible says, I'll look up. You need to look up and see nature. God created nature for beauty. And uh, when you look around this area, everywhere you look on the ground, there is garbage, there is uh, bovera, every... But when you look up, aren't you amazed by the greatness of God? And you're amazed by the beauty, the, 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 the formation of the crowd, the rising of the sun, the, the appearance of the sunset. Everything up that God created is so amazing. We live in a wonderful world. And I, I want to tell you people that Uganda is one of those few nations that are really so blessed. So blessed. We are so blessed. You never know until you go to Qatar. Or those Dubai, those desert places, or go to Kenya. I just said Kenya. Yeah, I went to I went to your country, Colin, and I drove from Nairobi, going south towards toward, um, toward um, Tanzania. Man, that you have a, a, an empty, dry space right there that I've never seen anywhere in Uganda. You go to the hills of Chigezi. And the beauty, the sizes, that, the valleys, the, the rivers, the lakes, the people. <laughs> my friend went to Malawi, was it Zambia? He went, she went to Zambia and she, she Zimbabwe. Well, Zambia, she went to, to Zambia for a month and she thought she was going, all Africans are the same. She called me like a week later and she said, these people are different. They are not Ugandans. I told her, yes, Uganda is up here. You are in Zambia. <laughs> we are the most hospitable people ever. Anywhere you go in the world. <laughs> you don't talk to strangers in Chigali. You don't talk to strangers in Tanzania. The Tanzanians who look at you and smile, 
But that smile in Tanzania means nothing. But a smile in Uganda means everything. You, you, can, you can talk to a stranger in Uganda. Even, I mean, have you seen those people driving and they stop in the middle of the road and they talk to one another? It's annoying, but you never see that anywhere. This guy's having a good time. It's one of those places Uganda is that people know how to be in a community, love one another, care for one another. I pray that this church will continue to be that place where connections and, and deep relationships are built. We don't come here only to serve the Lord. We come here to build a, a community of believers. We are the assembly of the saints. Amen? We are the body of Christ. We belong to one another. Even those of you that don't want to smile, we love you. Someday when you learn to smile, we will love you more. But for now, we love you enough. Amen. But we, uh, we want to thank God for what he's doing in the church. We, um, I told you that the rest of this year, we want to really major and dig deep into intercession and prayer and fasting. So we've uh, agreed with all the pastors that each pastor is going to pick a day. They are going to come here and spend a night here and lead a group of people in prayer. So at the back table, uh, as before you go out, I would love each one of you to register at least a night, one night in the week that is convenient for you. You can come and you find the pastor waiting here for you. They will lead you in prayer. Um, from There will be a pastor station here from Monday to Monday. And we'll be praying. Um, I don't want to say we'll pray through the night because many of you work and the kind of work you do, you need to rest. And so we'll pick hours in the night when we can all pray together and then have enough time for people to rest and wake up and then go to work. You can actually go to work from church. I've done that before, and it's a, a great feeling to come from the house of the Lord and go to your place of work. You need to try, to try it starting this week. So as you go out, please, there will be uh, registration papers at the back. Write your name. Write the day you, that you are able to make it in the week and make it a day that's going to be consistent. If you pick Monday, it will be Monday, to, it will be Monday for you from this month up to December so that we actually do what the Lord has in, instructed us to do to make this church an altar of prayer for this nation. Amen? Uh, why are the men dwindling? Everyone say amen. amen. We are not just a usual local church. We are an altar of prayer. There must be fire. I told you three things that need to be on the altar. I told you there must be what? Intercession. Thank you, Colin. Deep worship. And the preaching of the word. The reading and the preaching of the word. Those three are very, very important. When the spirit of the Lord is moving, is looking for those things. That's what the, the, the heaven calls an altar. There must be deep intercession. And we are going to actually we'll take some moment and teach about uh, prophetic intercession because that's really what we really need to do in this place. We are going to be praying for our lives. We are going to be praying for our families, our church, our community, but also our nation. Amen. I believe Uganda is, has entered a new era, a new season. Did you read the news that's gone all over the world that Uganda discovered a deposit of gold that no one, no one in the world ever thought Uganda has that much gold in our ground in Susanese village? Hey. I'm, I'm so happy my mother told me to 
not to go to Busoga, but to Busia. <laughs> My mother told me, never marry Musoga. So I bypassed Busoga and I went to Busia. And guess where the God is? Woo! But the Basoga, you are the neighbors. So from this day, I'm a full-time Musamia. Until the gold is totally gone, then I will come home. <laughs> but th that's, that's amazing news. And I, I started praying. I, I, the, ever since I had the news, I started praying a certain prayer. I said, Lord, that God must bless me. That God must bless my family, must bless my church, must bless my nation. It should never be the God, that the God of Congo that went to Belgium. Those nations, some of those European nations, their economy is backed by gold from Africa. But the Lord deposited some in Uganda. And I pray that no one, apart from those appointed by heaven, shall come to exploit or mine that, that, that deposit in Jesus' name. So you keep praying. Whoever has sinister ideas in this government, in the coming government, in investors, all those evil people that want to take what God has rightly given to Uganda, we denounce them. We lock them out of the doors in Uganda. That God belongs to the people of Uganda. And there is another rare, uh, the, another rare mineral pastor, uh, Dr. Bedi was t telling me. It is only found in two nations, China and Uganda. And it has been discovered that Uganda has one of the largest deposits of that. I think it's called rare earth mineral. It's only found in two nations. And that's beside the oil. That might even be underneath where we sit. So you want to leave? You want your passport? Leave Uganda? No, I'm staying right here. This is where the Lord has planted us, and we are going to, to, to eat the good of the land. The land must bless us in Jesus' name. So that's one of the reasons of our intercession, that we pray for this nation. We pray against the spirit of corruption. Amen. Well, last week we started talking and breaking the spirit of witchcraft. I want to, uh, to, to go ahead and uh, give you a few thoughts in the same area. But this week... Uh, was it a Thursday? Me and my my wife we we went to see my parents. In they live in Masulita, so we are talking. You, remember, you know how you sit down and you ask your parents, "How so and so? How so and so? How so?" Among the people that I asked was about two families. When we are growing up in Seguku, there were this the richest, two rich, stinking rich families in that area. don't know what happened, but at some point, each of those families were able to make enough money, and they made more than enough. And you know, in Africa, when you make more than enough, people start coming to you and tell you, hey, you need to keep that wealth. You need something to protect what you have. So usually, people will direct you to which doctors, so you can get some charm or whatever to protect your wealth. And those families... I don't know which one started, but one of them went and started doing witchcraft. And then the neighbor said, you are bewitching us. You are sending your demons to us. So they all also went and did witchcraft. And there was this fight of witchcraft for years. And the whole village knew that these families are fighting. Which one is the best? Which, one, which family is the biggest? Which family has enough money? So talking to my parent this week, I said, What's happening? And then they told me, every one of those family members, the parents died, and many of the children have died, but the, the, the children and the grandchildren have ended up divided. They don't talk to one another. The money is totally gone. Every property is sold. They, do, they cannot hold a family meeting. 
They are totally divided. One family, they were so educated. They worked in, they worked in banks. Some of them were educators. Some were medical personnel. But each one of them, they've lost their job. And they are sitting in their houses. No income, no relationship, nothing. And it reminds me of the verse that Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, that the enemy has come to steal, to rob, and destroy. But I have come that we may have life and life abundantly. It doesn't matter how much you serve the devil or how much you try to appease him. His agenda for you is one, destruction. His, his, his seemingly blessing will last for a moment, but eventually will take you where you belong, that he wants you to belong, and that's poverty, division. And so as we talk about this subject of, um, of witchcraft, some of you, you need to start backtracking and walk away from such background, such a past, because many of us have been part of that system of the old. And the repercussions are still following us. And you are suffering what was done maybe by your grandparents, maybe by your parents, maybe by me. I did a little bit of witchcraft when I was young. Not by choice, but it was a family thing. It was part of our family. When I was growing up, the moment I started, I opened my eyes and I understood. I remember my mother taking me, my brother, my sister, my young brother to a witch doctor, and they, they cut here, and then they cut back here, and they cut some hair, and some nail on the fingers and the toes, and they put in the thing, some, some paper or some cloth, and they gave us a, we call it a talisman. Yeah, and they, we, for, for many years, we, we, we could not put out that thing. It was in, in my waist. And all of us kids are the same. And we thought it was the in thing. You know how you buy an iPhone and you want to show it off? That's what we did with our talisman. <laughs> we thought it was a good thing and mama was given more charm. She put some herbs in, in, the, in the door post above the door and she put some things planted in the yard. That's all my mother knew. And it was part of her back background. My grandmother was a Mumbeja. She lived in Ruviri. And you know what went on in those places. And so uh, uh, we come from, most of us Africans, we come from that background. And it has totally affected us to the present. And so as we talk about these things, we really need to start walking away from those tendencies. You cannot deny your past because the past will always try to claim you. But we thank God for the word of God that gives us the power to overcome in Jesus' name. So um, on Wednesday, I started talking about the three types of witchcraft. And uh, the first one is what I talked about on Wednesday. I won't dwell so much on it. It's witchcraft as a work of the flesh and is found in Galatians 5.19. Witchcraft as a work of the flesh. Hmm. It's not only spiritual, but it's a work of the flesh. And it's listed in Galatians 5, 19 and 20. The Bible says, now the works of the flesh are evident. In other words, they are visible, easy to see, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, Contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. There in verse 20, you see the word is sorcery. You see that? In other versions, it's actually listed as witchcraft. But these are the works of the flesh. Before Paul lists for you the fruit of the spirit. He talks about the, the works of the flesh and he's telling the Galatian church that they that walk after the flesh 
will reap in the flesh. They will shall die. But they that follow the Spirit will live and bear fruits of the, of, the, of the Spirit. So one of the works of the flesh is listed as witchcraft, sorcery. And what is it? So it is a type of witchcraft that people do even without knowing, especially through this kind, this, uh, this type of witchcraft, the witchcraft um, as a work of the flesh, it is done through manipulation, when people exploit or take advantage of others, when others are ignorant or guilty of something. Manipulation, intimidation, and control. So we talked about that on Wednesday. We said in many marriages, wives manipulate husbands and husbands manipulate wives. Children manipulate parents and parents manipulate children. There is also manipulation in the church. There's manipulation in the business world. But the aim of this witchcraft is to dominate. It comes from a desire. A desire that is natural for all of us to be in charge. In Genesis 1 and chapter 1 and 2, the Bible says that when God created man, he gave him the authority to rule, to subdue, to dominate over nature. So there is an inborn desire for each one of us to be in control, to have some kind of control, some degree of control over stuff of people. We want to be leaders. We want to feel some of us are not safe until you really you are in control. Everyone has to be under you. And so what the enemy does, he takes that desire and adds on a, an evil desire and takes to the extreme so it becomes the work of the flesh and the Bible has listed this as soccer, sorcery, witchcraft. When you, 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 you use anything that's not the spirit of God to control people. Remember that definition that witchcraft is the use of a spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, but any spirit to manipulate, to control, and to dominate others. That's not what God meant when he said he subdue. He did not say Go and manipulate others. Take advantage of their ignorance, of their guilty. And I gave you examples on, on Thursday. Um, when, uh, I don't remember if I saw it, if I read about it. Someone took nude pictures of someone. You know someone can sneak with, with now these phones. Anyone can sneak in your bathroom and put a camera in your bathroom as you take shower or in your bedroom and tape and record whatever you do in that private chamber. And then when they have those pictures, then they will threaten, start threatening you. If you don't give me this money, I will release the video. If you don't do this, I will release the pictures. That's called manipulation. You are taking advantage of their innocence to gain for yourself. And it happens in the church. It should never happen anywhere in the family. You don't, you, don't, you don't tell your children that if you don't sweep the yard, I won't take you to school. That's not a good spirit. You need to teach your children that sweeping the yard is part of the beauty of creation. When you make it clean, make them stand back and say, look how neat, how clean it is. Let them appreciate what they see. Do not make your children do things by manipulation. But that's the way we were brought up. I have manipulated people before. I remember preaching on crusades. And you preach, and people don't get saved. You preach, and people don't get saved. So you go home and come up. You know, what's the scariest thing that I can scare these people the hell out of them? And uh, so you come up. With an idea that you people, if you don't get saved, you will die tomorrow. Some of you, you won't see the sun. That's not the spirit of God. 
It may be true, but that's not the Spirit of God. Unless you have received the word of knowledge, and it is specific, uh, someone here is going to die. But you see, we in the ministry or in the church, sometimes we do those things to persuade the people without waiting for the Spirit of the Lord to convict them. The best repentance, the best transformation or change that can happen in a person's life is when the Holy Spirit convicts the person rather than the persuasion of our words. So there is a debate going on on social media right now about tithing. And I have friends that are saying, no tithing, no tithing, no giving, no giving. Because, you know, I, I wrote something, I put it on our Facebook and on my Facebook. And I said, you know what, I've had a personal evolution about tithing. It's not a law for me. It's, it's not a force. I cheerfully, me and my wife and my family, we cheerfully give more than the tithe. So it is a revelation. Now, the, of course, there are people who have scared people into giving. If you don't give, you go back to the village. Not everyone in the village is back there because they didn't give. My parents are in the village not because they refuse to give. They are there because they chose. You understand? But do, do, do not, we, we are not supposed to manipulate or control. I can, I know pastors that will never give away their pulpit unless they are being operated. Even if they are operated, they will, they will be in Mulago and put on Zoom so they can preach from their sick bed. <laughs> yes. So, are we together, people? So, witchcraft, as the work of the flesh, that comes from the desire for power, a desire for to be in control. Number two, witchcraft has a spiritual power. That's it's the second type of witchcraft. Witchcraft has a spiritual power. You have to understand not all power, all, all supernatural things come from God. Some come from the enemy. He fell when he left heaven. He fell with some power. The devil has the power to perform miracles. You need to understand that when you read in, in, the, in, the, in the book of Genesis, is it Genesis? Not Genesis, Exodus. The Bible says when Moses took his rod and put it on the ground, even the witches of Africa, they put it on the ground and their rods, sticks, became snakes like Moses' snake, stick. But the Bible says Moses' rod was able to swallow the rest of their sticks. So you need to understand not all supernatural power comes from God. Amen? So witchcraft has those, witchcraft can be a, a, a spiritual power, apart from the work of the flesh. And that's what is uh, mainly, that's what we deal with in Africa, but I want to say all over the world. I've been to the U.S., they have witchcraft, they just refuse to talk about it. I've seen I've seen people under curses and spells in church, and they call it a condition. They even give them tablets. They live on tablets. You ask, what are you suffering from? The doctors can't find. Anytime you find, you go to the medicine, uh, medical center, and they tell you, we can't find your sickness. We can't locate it. And that you are in too much pain. There must be, there might, there might be witchcraft. So there are, may, there are, so there are three types of witchcraft, but let me give you three, the, the three main branches of it. So I just mentioned uh, the, second, the second type of witchcraft, but it is branched out in three branches. One, witchcraft. The main branches are what we call, this one I named it witchcraft. 
The, this is the power arm of the devil that releases spells and curses. We know what spells are. I'll give you a verse in a moment. Do you know what a curse is? Do you know what a spell is? They are all almost similar, except that a spell doesn't last as long as a curse. A curse can go from generation to generation to generation. The Bible says it goes to the fourth generation and the Lord will revisit that curse at the fourth generation. He says, God, in his word, that a blessing can go for a thousand years, but a curse will go to the fourth generation. At the fourth generation, the Lord will come down and find out, are these people repented? So I can break it from their line. If they don't, it will continue for another four. Until one of you wakes up and repents on behalf of the line, and then the Lord can deal with the, the curse and bring a blessing. But a blessing can, lie, can, can last for a thousand years. A spell, you know, when someone is, says you are under a spell, have you seen those people that go, in music concerts, especially secular music concerts. And the, the, there is a crowd, and someone comes from the back, they are half naked, some, some, some women, they are, even their knickers are out, and these people start dancing before men, and everyone fight to go to the front. There is some even, they remove their jackets, or their shirt, uh, I've seen one remove <laughs> removing their knicker, and they threw it to the crowd, and the people, everyone jumped to catch the knicker. Eh! Wanangi. Don't record that one. <laughs> you know what? Those people, they are under spell. Something happens. It is like someone over takes your reasoning, and you can't reason any, anymore, and they ask you, why are you supporting that political candidate? No reason. You are under a spell. Everyone is. They go in drives, in crowds, and then after they vote, they wake up and say, what did I just do? The spell has left. It's some kind of demonic influence that shuts your eyes. You are, you are awake, but no reasoning. There is some power that controls you. You do something. Have you seen someone? There was a coach Alex arrested a man here, right here in the center of, uh, of Chiganda. A man during broad daylight trying to defile, rape a young, a young girl about 10 years. This was not in the house or some darker, darker corner. It was in a broad daylight. This man trying to rape a young lady. And then after they beat him, he woke up and said, what were you thinking? And he said, I don't know. I don't know what came upon me. I, it's called a spell. It's some kind of witchcraft. It's the power arm of the enemy. And that's why you really need to be alert 24-7. Be drunk, not with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit when every moment of your life because people, these people with witchcraft are walking out around every day cursing, cursing people but also dispersing spells over crowds. You go to a market and people don't, don't know. You go, to, you go to a place that you catch a thief and all of a sudden, including the Balokolis, they say, let's kill him. All of a sudden, even the, 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 the police, the Balokole, everyone becomes part of the mob. No one is reasoning. No one will stop to ask, what did he steal? Where is the item that he stole? You understand, people, the, 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 it can be a spell. And the, the, the enemy does this on purpose to get a human sacrifice. Few weeks back here in the night, they caught a thief somewhere there, and the, the, the whole village came here. I, I, I was told some balokole came along, and they were chanting, let's kill him, let's kill him. It was coach who stopped them from throttling a man, killing a man, right in the church courtyard. 
What comes on people like that when they, there is a number of people that come together? Usually something overtakes them and they all become a mob. You know what a mob is? It's a, a group of people that have lost their reasoning. And so thank God for Coach Alex. He was able to take the guy, lock him up, call the police, and save his life. Because no one had the evidence that this was a thief. Now, even if he was a thief, there are laws that every nation follows to deal with people like that. Do you understand? So you, 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 you people, you need to understand that maybe you have been under spell one, one time and you did something. You need to wake up. Numbers 22 10. The Bible says, So, so Balaam said to God, To God, Balak the son of Zo, Balaam said to God, Balak the son of Zippa, King of Moab has sent me saying, Look at, look, a people has come out of Egypt and they cover the face of the earth. Come now, cast them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. This guy possessed the power of witchcraft, that is what you call the spiritual power of darkness. People with this kind of power can curse you. If you do not carry the Spirit of God, if the Spirit of God does not dwell in you, these people can look at you and say something and catch up with you. Some of you, you have experiences from your past with people like this. It may be your, especially if they're in the place of authority over you. As a kid, your auntie, your uncle, your mother, any guardian that you submitted under and they had power over you, they could and they can pronounce something on you and it can actually follow you if they are possessed by some kind of which dark powers. That's why the Bible recommends that we be filled with the Spirit of God. So, Balaam, um, Balaam is a guy that is invited to curse. Is it Balaam? That was invited. He was known, well known in the land that if that guy does something and says something, it will come to pass on your life. And he was possessed by dark powers, by powers of darkness. And so the, when the Israel is moving through the land, walking through the land, and um, this king of Moab gets scared of their numbers. He had heard of their fame in Egypt, what they did to Egypt, the greatest nation on earth, what they did in the desert to the Amalekites, what they did as they came, and he knew they are moving toward him, and they are about to take over his nation, so he didn't have the military power or the economic supplies to stop this kind of um, crowd that was coming, that was sweeping through the land. So he comes, with, he comes up with a plan and he's saying, I'd rather cast them. But he didn't have possess the power to cast, so he invites someone that was possessed by powers of darkness to come and cast them. And he says, why? Why does the people who cast and bewitch do not need a reason. You don't have to do anything wrong. The devil has always been the devil. He's, 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 he's a liar. He, he doesn't like you. And so this, this, this guy said, come and cast them for me. Because they are many. They are numerous at the sand of the sea. They cover the earth, he says. Come and cast them. Perhaps they will be, you'll be able to up, up, overpower them and drive them away. And now, that's very true with curses. If you, witchcraft has that power to blind you, but also can drive you out of a job, 
can drive you out of a house, can drive you out of a marriage, can drive you out of a place, out of a relationship. That's why the Bible says, if possible, be at peace with everyone. What people do, especially people who operate in the, sp the spiritualists, people who operate in the, with the powers of darkness, when they see a, fl a, flash, a, flourishing, a flourishing relationship, maybe a marriage, maybe a business partnership, maybe a relationship that is damaging their kingdom, they will bring a division and there will be an argument between two people that love one another or work together. And they will get, they will have a look ahead against each other. They will fight each other and separate. So division is not of God. Do you understand people? Division at any level in marriage, in family, in business, division is known of God. So the enemy uses those things. That's one of the weapons is division. And that's one of the agendas of witchcraft, to divide. So these powers of darkness come and they divide and drive people out. And say, so why did you leave? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just felt uh, I don't belong there anymore. Uh, you ask people, why did you divorce? Ah, you know, we are not compatible. Compatible, you are not a, a, a cast spare part that you, that you have to fit perfectly. You, you are not a battery to be inserted. You, you are just a human being with the abilities to transform and change and develop and become better. Amen? And so people give you reasons why they separate. That's why as Christians, you need to fight for every relationship. If there is a misunderstanding within the church, make sure you do not leave during that time because that's the agenda of the enemy that you leave and you lose your destiny friends. You lose your covenant relationships. You don't know what that does to your destiny when you subtract what God has brought to you to be part of of your victory, to be part of your formation, to be part of the person that you are becoming. And the enemy looks at you and says, if they stay in this environment of Kawempe Worship Center, they are going to start becoming more and more powerful. I need to dismantle them from their relationship. Sweet, you come to church and no one greets you and people talk against you and all of a sudden you say, I think I belong to Pastor Jackson in Senyonga. You walk away and you try to start a new relationship, the devil will follow you there after four years. That's why freeing, running away, flight is not of God. Christians will stay until conflicts are resolved, and then they can live in time of peace with the blessing of their comrades or brothers. Amen? So this, this guy is a witch. He casts spells on people. So the, the, the rest of the story you shall read. He tries. But when he goes up the mountain, they give him, they built an altar. You have to read this chapter, by the way, to understand. They built an altar, and he offers a sacrifice. The same way we do in church, the witch doctors do. They offer the sacrifice, and then... Instead of a demon coming over him on the top of the mountain, looking down in the valley to curse the children of Israel, he looks down and starts prophesying. I say, oh, I see them seated peacefully as young lions. And he prophesies. That's the verse I read you last week. And then he says, I see no iniquity. I see no wickedness among them. When those two are absent, no one can bewitch you. When sin, when you become sinless, white as snow as the blood of Jesus washes you, no one, no demon, no powers of darkness come, can come against you. So that's the thing that at the end of this session we will have to deal with. Why? If the Bible says no one can bewitch us, why then are some of us under the spell, under curses? It's one, one verse there that says 
I see no sin, I see no iniquity, and I see no wickedness in Jacob, no wickedness in Israel. And he says, therefore, I cannot curse what God has blessed. We'll get there. So this is what this guy does. He tries to curse, but he ends up prophesying. And I was, um, I was thinking, man, we, we, we really have some of those brothers in the church. We still have the Barams. I see, I, I see them in church. Today they are prophesying. Tomorrow they are cursing. <laughs> ah, those are very hard to deal with. Um, you remember in the book of Matthew, chapter 16. So I think verse 12 going down there, Jesus gathered the 12 and he asked them, what do people say I am privately? And they say, oh, some say you are Elijah, some say you are one of the prophets, some say you are John the Baptist. And then he turns to them and says, Who, what do you say I am? And Peter, Peter being Peter, he raises up his hand and says, you are the cross of God. Oh, and Jesus turns to Peter and says, Peter, that has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And you are a rock. You are Petros, and on you I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I can see Peter going like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's who I am. You are right on target, Jesus. Woo! Even my mother told me. I've always been that sharp. <laughs> And then the Bible says, when you, when you go down in the same chapter, the, and then starting from that moment, Jesus begins to explain to them his destiny. How the Son of Man must suffer at the hands of the Gentiles who be crucified, buried, but he will resurrect. When the moment Jesus started to go that direction, the Bible says Peter took him aside. He took him away from the crowd and said, Jesus, <laughs> I just described you. I just gave you this identity. Eh? And then look at what you are adding on my, my definition of you. The Bible says Jesus brings him back to the disciples and tells him, get behind me, Satan. You read that chapter, you'll be amazed that the bro brother Balaam, Balaam is still active in the church. Peter, same chapter, prophesies and then he curses. Possessed, filled with the Holy Spirit, a revelation, and then possessed by the devil. Same guy, same location. What happens? It is there are people like that who go in between, serving God and serving the devil. But I'm telling you people, so the, 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 the other branch of witchcraft is, um, witchcraft as, um, as a power of darkness, but also there is what we call divination. Divination, that's another branch of witchcraft. And this one is fortune telling. It is forward telling the future, divination. And it resembles the gift of prophecy. It's another branch of witchcraft. So there is the power, outright power that attacks. But then there is this one. It is not more pronounced, but oh my God. It's sought after, sought after by many people. So the Bible says in Acts 16, 16, now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters, March 4th, 
much profit by fortune, fortune telling. The, the story is wrong, but the story goes that uh, uh, Paul, this girl, starts shouting in the city center. These are the servants of the Most High. These are the servants of the Most High. Now, was she lying? No. But it was that the Spirit of God? No. Hey, that's where the Spirit of discernment is very important. Now, divination as a branch of witchcraft, it has swallowed the church and swallowed many people. Why? Because it, it, it derives or drives or um, on the desire for knowledge. No one is seated in this room doesn't want to know. Who doesn't want to know what will happen tomorrow? Every one of us, there is that desire. I want to know what will happen, what will happen. So I've had people walk to me and say, man of God, what's the Lord saying? My prophecy is simple. Pray, read your Bible and go home. To your wife or to your children. <laughs> That's a great prophecy right there. So someone comes to you, man of God, man of God, I, we hear you are in prayers and fasting. What is the Lord saying? The Lord is saying, oh, read your Bible and pray unceasingly, period. But then that desire, especially for those of you that have had prophetic dreams or have had a word of knowledge or, or a prophetic word for someone, sometimes it comes and never comes back for another year. Sometimes you dream, and the dream never comes back. But if you desire too much to foretell, to, to tell what's coming, I've seen people in our prayer meetings, you know they are lying, but they say, I had a dream. No! You had a rumor. You had someone talking, and now you are bringing it as a, 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 a dream or a prophetic thing. We know the Spirit of the Lord is upon us to discern some of those things. But it comes from the desire to be able to tell the, what will happen tomorrow. And people have a desire to know. That's why anything called a prophet in this nation is the most hot cake in this land. Anywhere you go, South Africa, Nigeria, the prophets, especially the, the false ones, are more popular than the politicians, than the pastors. Why? Because in humanity, there is a desire to know. Do you understand? But Jesus said in John, <laughs> he says, when the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit come on, on you, he will tell you things to come. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ, but also is called the Spirit of prophecy. All my life, I've never gone after a prophet. I don't care where they are. I don't care who they are. I don't care who, if they are telling everyone, if a prophet wants want to foretell anything on my life, he will have to find me. I cannot take a taxi or a bus or drive, go to someone who came from Kenya, Nigeria, Zambia, there is a prophet in that church prophesying all this week. Let him prophesy. The Lord knows my address. Do you understand? But the desire for, for foretelling, for foreknowing, is a desire that people go from church to church. Hey, Gundi Alagula, this man can tell you what you ate. This man can then, and then that, that desire drives you. But yet, it's the Spirit of God on you, who is actually working through him, but can also work through you. God has spoken to me about my future. God has spoken to me about my children. God has spoken to me about my marriage. God has given me a picture of this church in the future. I have seen the future of Uganda. Hey, that's why I see you can have a passport called Ugandan passport. So, but 
people have a desire to know. And that desire is what brings about this form of witchcraft, divination. It's a real spirit. It is a familiar spirit that resembles a prophetic, a prophetic gift. Especially those of you that come from the West. The people that are possessed with Bachwezi, the spirit of Bachwezi, they are very actress in their prophets, in their divination. I had one when we, have just, when we had just started the church in Masulita. <laughs> I'll never forget the guy had a dream of the visas coming tomorrow. They had a dream of our services. The guy, he was, he was from the West. But this guy was very, and took me a long time to discern that this man had a spirit. But that spirit on that man was very, very precise. He never lied. <laughs> The guy had just gotten saved. But he had the gift. Mania, the, the, the spirit, the demon of the Bachwes. But I remember one time, then he started telling dreams that we could not interpret. I think that was the Lord trying to wake me up, but I didn't wake up. Then one day, we are in a service. We are praying for people to be delivered. And he was one of them. And there was a very big demon with horns that left him that day and he never had a, a, another dream until we left. He never prophesied again. <laughs> I, have, I have seen some of the biggest prophets in town who are really possessed by the virtues. And uh, I remember the kid, the village people say, I don't know how to term this in, in English, but he sent Oyalio Rumanyo, that they have for one knowledge, that they, they, they say they ate something. This was in built in most cultures in Africa. They always had those women, all the women that who, who, who dream and tell you things. Forward telling, Though the devil stole it, prophecy was part of the kingdom of God. And you always be part of the kingdom of God. Why? God stands in the present and declares the future. Do you understand? God stands here and all he sees, he sees you, but he sees your children, he sees your grandchildren, he sees the, you to a thousand generations. And that's the God we serve. He sees your future. He forms your future. And sometimes he comes and reveals to you what you really need to do. You don't need to run to other people to tell you what God is saying. Why? Because you have a personal relationship with God. God is able to speak to you. I've never had a prophet speak to me something that I had no idea about. Every prophetic word, word of knowledge that has ever come to my, my life has come in a season when the Lord is giving, already given me a, an hint about the word, but so the word, the prophetic word comes to confirm. I've never had someone come from the blue and tell me something God has not spoken to me about. That's a reason for prayer, so that your mind is in that position to perceive what is going on in the spirit and what God is doing. So you don't wait for people to come. That says the Lord. Move from Kawempe to uh, there. No, God has speak to you. Do you understand? So that's why if you ever receive a word of prophecy, a word of knowledge that you had no idea, you deserve the right, the Bible says, to test the spirit of prophecy. The word of prophecy must be tested. So you, don't, you just say, ah, pastor said, no. Even me, myself, if I come to you and say, that say the Lord, give me those shoes. Don't just give me the shoes. You just say like a real locally, that let me pray. If the Lord speak to me to give them to you, I will come. Because people have come in the spirit of manipulation and divination and stolen it from others. I remember someone coming to my person in Segoko and say, The Lord told me that I am, I am his servant. I am the intercessor of the church. You need to give me a salary. 
And the pastor was wise enough, he says, that's a great word, but the Lord has not spoken to me. But I will go back to him. If he tells me to, to do what you said, I will give you a salary. And the Lord never came. And she left. She did not wait for the Lord to answer. So, people, divination, these are, let me give you the third one. I'll explain it next week, maybe, the other, in another time. Let me give you the third branch of this sorcery. Sorcery is another branch of witchcraft. It's, it's the same, but it operates differently. It's all witchcraft. So there is the powers of witchcraft. Then there is definition. There is the sorcery operating through objects that brings luck. And this is, I don't know what they call this in Luganda. Okuloga. <laughs> so sorry. And they do this. To bypass your brain and put something on you and destroy you know how God, you know how God um, develops and executes a plan that we call destiny for each one of us? The enemy does the same and destroys your destiny. So that's why you have witchcraft, I mean uh, drugs, sexuality, all those things the enemy does to destroy your destiny. Amen? So, some of you, you are fighting things that they, it seems like every day you fight, every day you fight, you, you, you give up immorality, but then it is back. Sometimes it's not just a habit. There is powers behind it that are attached to the habit. And it may be a form of witchcraft. The moment you are delivered from the spirit, even the habit will go immediately. You understand? So those people that take drugs, <laughs> I had one of them and he said, if a drug addict come, comes in Ikawempe, it will take him about five minutes to tell you who is a comrade. You know, you can tell this is, this is the fellow locally sometime immediately. A drug addict doesn't, you, have to have, you don't have to say a word, you don't have to say anything, they connect in the spiritual world immediately. They know each other. So socially, is very uh, another branch of, um, of witchcraft that you must be aware of. We shall explain some of this in details later. But I want to tell you people um, that God has not given us a spirit of fear. I think in First Timothy 1, 7, can you give me that verse? If you delay, I open my own Bible. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of... Mm -hmm. that, those are some of the verses you need to have on your fingertips. And we used to sing a song out of it. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Second Timoth Second Timothy, is it Second Timothy? But he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the sound mind. That's, that, sometimes that's how we remember scriptures, through the songs. That you people don't have, don't have worship with, from the scriptures, but my generation, where I come from, we used to sing, God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. The biggest weapon of the devil, there are two, and you don't need to forget them. Put this at the back of your mind. Ignorance 
and fear as you stand on your feet. Ignorance and I have not mentioned witchcraft. I say the biggest weapon of the enemy are two ignorance. He will keep you in the dark. Ignorance is the same as darkness. Ignorance and I don't hear you. Ignorance and ignorance and those are the biggest weapons of the enemy. Anytime demonic forces, you are confronted by demonic forces, what will come first or what will go through you is you will shake, you will be scared, even in a dream, even when you are, you are walking. I remember as a kid, there was um, a banana plantation, and they told us there was, um, you call them night dancers, wizard. So this night dancer will start around eight. So one day, me and my brother, we are going to the shop to buy something by eight. Eight was already pitch dark. And so we go through here, and we've been told there is a night dancer. I don't know whether there was someone who had us come, but someone, you know how those dry banana, dry banana leaves, how they make that noise? Oh, someone was one of those. And he made a sound, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't think... We left everything there and we ran for our lives. But you could have seen the fear on our faces of the wizard. They, they are not that powerful, but they scare you into submission. If you can live over fear, then you have overcome. So let me tell you people, you don't need to fear these things. Don't go home and go deeper into conversation of darkness and witchcraft. No, you don't. Go deeper in the word of God. I'm just highlighting you these things. You don't need to go to a witch doctor. Someone, some, I went to a church to preach, and the pastor told me, but before you preach, we have a former witch doctor. He's going to give his testimony for 30 minutes, and when he's done, then you can come. So I was supposed to start by midnight. It was an overnight, but the witch doctor, the former witch doctor started first, and then he started. He went from noon to midnight, one, two, three, at four. I went to sleep in my car, and I woke up by six, and he was still on them. So he am. Um, I am. Um, <laughs> So, but I remember listening to some of his testimonies and he was telling me, me, I was a witch doctor in Uganda. We are the one who set accidents. We sacrificed humans. We did this. He was taking people deep in the, in the dark world. You don't need to know what happens where you are not going. I'm not going to hell. I don't need to know the details. I'm going to heaven. Give me someone who has been there. So please, this is enough. The, 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 the headlines I'm giving you. Do not go home and dig deep. Hey, what is this church? No, don't go. Unless you are doing a research for a paper or something. Just know that there is witchcraft. No details. But in the name of Jesus, God has given you the power. Power! And his power is more powerful than the devil's power. Amen? You need to remember he has a final word. Not the witch doctor, not the wizard, not your mother, not those curses. Those people that curse you or bewitch you in your office, they have no power. Why? God has not given you fear, but has given you the spirit of power. One word from your mouth can shut all the witchcraft in that company. Hey, one word from your mouth. If you get rid of fear in your life and stop and stop and stop whispering in that office corridor, and you 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 make a kuku in your office, come out right and say, you know what? I feel like there is witchcraft, but whoever is doing witchcraft in this office is wasting their time in Jesus' name. Hey, you know the most scared people in this world are people who do witchcraft. The moment they know that you know. The moment they know that you know, 
Their power is in ignorance. They think you don't see. They think you don't know. It's one of those things that you need to do in the staff room before you, you, um, you exit. You just raise up your hand and say, you know, I know we've set the agenda of the week and know everything is going to happen like it's happened. The Lord is going to help us. But I also want to mention that in my spirit, I feel that one of us is practicing witchcraft. But I want you to know, whoever you are, that me, I am in locally. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach good news. He has given me the power to deliver the captives, to declare the favor of the Lord this year. The, the, the year of the Lord's favor. I am able to deliver. I am able to set free. Let the witches in your circle know. That's what I did in Masulita. We went around and we told them, we are unlockable, we are unjoggable, we are all those things in Jesus' name. <laughs> you understand, people? I want to end by telling, do not fear. Have boldness. Speak out. It will try to attack you in the night. That's what witchcraft does. Scare you in the middle of the night. And witchcraft will come to you in these three hours. One, two, and three. If you stay awake in prayer, it will never come. <laughs> so I pray over you in Jesus' name. I speak the spirit of Christ on you. The spirit of power. The spirit of a sound mind. I pray over you in Jesus' name. Some of you, you are walking away from curses and spells. I pray that the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and open your eyes. I pray that you wake up from your sleep. I pray every spell of your life. I pray and break every curse of your life. I pray every form of witchcraft that they have given you to jump over, to eat in your food, to drink in your dream, in your drink, to sit on your, in your chair, the, in your doorstep as you go to your office. I demand and unify all those powers in Jesus' name. I declare and plead the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you as you arise in the morning, as you go to town, as you go to the city, as you enter that office, as you come to your home, as you go everywhere. I declare the presence of the Lord to be like a crowd or pillar over you, to be like a fire around you. No witchcraft, no sorcery, no powers of darkness shall come around in your circle for the Lord your God is he who goes before you, behind you, beside you, beneath you, and above you in Jesus' name. I declare that you shall be the head, not the tail. Whatever those witches have, have, have cast and spelled over you, I, I nullify them. I neutralize them in Jesus' name. I render them powerless. I plead and declare the favor of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the abundance of the kingdom on your life in Jesus' name. May you be the head, not the tail. May you be elevated. May you increase in the name of Jesus. This next week, may your enemies come to you in one direction by this person seven who is there that's not praying. Raise up your voice and intercede on your behalf. Pray for your children. Pray for your husband. Pray for your job. Pray for your business. Pray for something. Break the, break the powers of darkness. I pray over this church. There have been false prophets that have come around in this compound and brought blood of humans and animals and birds and bewitched this church and cast and put a spell over this church that we shall never increase, that we shall never grow, that we shall never expand. But in the name of Jesus, I stand in the word. I stand in the word under the blood of Jesus. In the power of the Holy Ghost, I command every car every word, negative word that ever been declared against Kawempe Worship Center, against this ministry, from those witches, from those prophets, pro false prophets, in the name of Jesus, I nullify them. I dismantle them. I neutralize them. In the name of Jesus, I render them powerless for the word of God, for my God has a final word. Whatever he says, he's able to do, and he will do. I 
declare the word of the Lord over Kawempe Worship Center, over every family, over every individual. I declare the word of the Lord over my children, over my wife, over my children, over my finances, over my neighborhood, over this ministry, over this nation. I declare the word of the Lord on everything that concerns me. I will not die, but I will live to see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord became poor, so I may be rich. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I declare life and life abundantly. I declare every limitation broken, every boundary broken, every ceiling broken of my family, of my past, of my present. In the name of Jesus, I declare the power of the Holy Ghost. I speak a breakthrough. I'm breaking out of every curse, of every spell, of every limitation, of every ceiling, of every boundary. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Rasiko potaka sakarabasa, resete kereri arababa, riko soko potaka saya, rika sakarababa bababa. I declare over the powers of darkness, over Kawempe Worship Center and this region of Kawempe, the powers of darkness that sit on the top of Jinja Kalori, Ejemi Samba, in the name of Jesus, I dismantle your altars, I dismantle your shrines, I dismantle your sacrifices, I render them powerless from this day forth. No one shall call our spirit and they answer in Jesus' name. I dismantle every evil altar in the area of Kawempe, in this division from Kubiri, Kamakerere, Oh, I'm going go every area, every area, every area, every area in the name of Jesus. Every altar of evil in this area, I dismantle you. I dismantle you. I dismantle you with the fire. I dismantle you with 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 fire. Every, every powers of darkness, every principality, I lend you powerless. For this area, the Lord has given us. Kawempe belongs to the church. Kawempe division belongs to the church. Kawempe division belongs to us. We declare and decree that people shall be born again. We pray over the population of Kawempe that people shall be born again. We call them out of shrines. We call them out of the region. We call them out of witchcraft. We call them out of prostitution. We call them out of drugs. We call them out of fury. We call them out of wickedness. We call them out in Jesus' name. Come out to people of Kawempe. May the Lord open your ears. May the Lord open your eyes. May the Lord resurrect your spirit. May the Lord awaken this area to be born again. I speak salvation. I speak salvation of the Kawempe division. I I speak salvation over this division of Kawempe. May people flock to churches. May they be born again. May Jesus be revealed to them. May they know Jesus as their personal savior. I speak to a student of Makerere. For in Jesus' name, from Waisa to Kagoma, from Chajukwo, from Logoba to, to Maganjo, in the name of Jesus, every village, every area, I call you out. Be born again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak open eyes. I speak open ears to the population of Kawempe. Oh, devil, you've held these people so for too long in the powers of the dungeons of hell, in the dungeons of wickedness. But in the name of Jesus, I stand as a servant of the Lord, under the apostolic anointing under the power of the Holy Ghost I call them out come out of darkness come out and be born again come out and be born again come out and be born again who is there that's standing and not praying people Reset pray, 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 release the people, release the population of Kawempe, release the people, release them from the regions, release them from the witchcraft, release them from prostitution, release the people of Kawempe. Reshiko potaka sakara baba baba, yete kereri orobo shikata kara, 
Likasata karababababababa Yete kereri yorobose Linda rabababababababa Yete kereri yorobose Likasata kamandoro Likasi yobose keteke Lindi yorobose kereri yarababa Likasata karababababa Resi yorobose kereri yara Likasete kereri yarababa Remesi poto kosa Likayando robobobobobo Erensi korobose kerebe Lindi yarababababa Ya karababababa Release your family, release your family, release your family, release your family, release your parents, release your brothers and sisters, release your family, release your family. Attack those songs of witchcraft in your line, in your family, in your clan. Release your mother, release your father, release your brothers, release your sisters, release your siblings, release the uncles and aunts. In Jesus' name, I declare salvation. I declare over my father, and my father. Father, my mother, my parents, my uncles and aunts, I declare the kingdom of God over them. I command the powers of darkness, the powers of witchcraft to release my line, to release my sisters, to release my father, to release my mother, to release my brothers, to release them in Jesus' name. I call my sisters out. I call my brothers out. May the Holy Spirit of God open their eyes. May he open their ears in Jesus' name to hear the God to see the works of God. I declare over my family that you shall no longer serve the devil, but you shall come out to serve the living God. I declare and dismantle every altar of witchcraft in my family. I declare and decree that my family shall know Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I dismantle family altars, evil family altars. I dismantle them. I dismantle them. I dismantle them every witchcraft they did on the graves of the dead. I dismantle witchcraft they did with animal sacrifice. I dismantle witchcraft in my family. They did with human sacrifice. I dismantle the, the, the sacrifice. Oh, evil altars, they did, they built with, with uh, bad uh, blood in Jesus' name. I dismantle, I render them powerless. I speak life in my family. They shall know Jesus. They shall walk with Jesus. They shall know his word and walk in his ways and tremble at his word and do his will and keep his ways. My family, my brothers, my sisters, they shall serve the Lord. They shall know his name. They shall call on the name of the Lord and be saved. I declare salvation over my family. May salvation flow like a river. May salvation flow like a river. Every effect of witchcraft of my family, the effect of poverty, death, untimely death, sicknesses, lack. Oh, I dismantle them in Jesus' name. I reverse the, 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 the effects of witchcraft. I reverse the effects of witchcraft. I reverse the effects of witchcraft over my life, over my wife, over my children, over my brothers, over my sisters. There will be no accidents. There will be no untimely death. No sickness that is unexplainable. In the name of Jesus, I reverse, I reverse, I reverse the effects of witchcraft over my family. Resete kereri araba liko soko pota kasara resi orobo sekete kereri ar linda araba baba 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 resete kereri araba resete kereri araba resete kereri araba romo sepete kesa rasa takara baba baba resete kereri araba sikala I speak I speak the word of the Lord over my family they shall know the Lord they shall serve the Lord they shall hear His word and obey His word and obey His voice they shall know his purpose. They shall do his will. My children, my wife, my brothers, my sisters, my mother, my father, everything that we belong belong to us in our family. I redeem it with the blood of Jesus. I declare thy kingdom come over Mrs. family. I declare, I pray for my, bro my brother Michael. I pray for my brother Ronald. I pray for my brother Isaac. I pray for my all my brothers. I pray for my sister Nabukela. I pray for my my sister Mille, I pray for my sister Olivia, I pray for all my sisters, I mention them by name, I call them out, 
I call them out. I call you out. Oh, Olivia, come out. Nebuchadnezzar, come out. Miriam, come out. Oh, you, my sisters, come out of witchcraft. Come out of darkness. Come out of curses. Call them by name. Call them by name. Call your mother by name. Call your sisters by name. Call your brothers by name. Call your family members by name. Call them out. 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 Call them by name, call them by name, call them by name. Oh, Mire, my sister Mire, I call you out. Oh, witchcraft, I call you out. You shall no longer serve Lubare, you shall no longer serve Misamba, you shall no longer serve those foreign gods. You shall know the Lord your God, the living God of the creator of heaven and earth, as the true worship of the true God that created you and him alone shall you serve and him alone shall you walk after and him alone shall you serve. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes. Holy Spirit, oh pursue. Go after my sister. Go after my sisters. Go after my brothers. Go after their families. Go after them. Lord, I stand in the gap. 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 I stand in the gap on behalf of my family. On behalf of my family. And I pray the blood. I pray the blood that you poured on the cross. I pray the blood of Jesus over each one of them and their family. They shall not die. They shall live to see the goodness of the Lord. No one of them shall die without knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Oh Lord, every poverty that is connected to which I demand and I command and decree it shall no longer thrive in our family. I release our family properties. I release our land. Every spell, every curse, every throne that of evil that was built on our family property, I dismantle. I render them powerless. I nullify every covenant that my forefathers did on behalf of us, the children. We are no longer connected for the blood blood of Jesus speaks a better thing. For the blood of Jesus speaks better things. Resete kereri araba, resete kereri araba, rama sekete kereri araba, yete kereri araba, raba sekete kera, lika sata karaba, yata karaba, yete kereri orobo se, lita kasata kaba, rubushi kamandara, lika si orobo se, lika sakaraba, yete kereri orobo se, lika sata karaba, yete kereri orobo se, lika sata karaba. Baba, Oh Father, we give you praise. We overcome witchcraft. We overcome divination. We have victory over witchcraft. Victor over sorcery. Victory, victory, victory. We are victors in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your fire. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you, Jesus. Our families are free. Our families are free. Our sisters are free. Our uncles are free. Our sisters, yes, our mothers are free. We 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 are free. Come on, somebody. Take two minutes and declare your freedom. Take two minutes and take left freedom in the name of Jesus. Free from sorcery. Free from witchcraft. Come on, somebody. Deeper, 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 deeper. Deeper, 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 deeper. There's two minutes uh, as you launch deeper. No, no more powers of witchcraft. Eh? No more sorcery. No more divination. Uh, no more, no more. Ratatatatata. Man, ta 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 ra ta 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 sa re te te bro sa come on somebody be crazy as you overcome be crazy as you declare in the name of Jesus sa ro te le le bo sa man te te ya sa re te te bro sa victory victory ha victory victory ha victory victory ha in the name of Jesus sa oh sa te le bo sa man to te zeta you cannot humble yourself as we overcome you cannot be humble as we overcome you need to be radical you need to be vibrant you need to be crazy ma ra ta 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 
Marata da 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 da, Marete le lebosa, yete di de mahasa, mantete de lebosa. In the name of Jesus, oh my God, oh yes, Jesus, there is fire all over. There is fire all over the place. There is fire in our houses. There is fire. There is fire everywhere. Fire for the victors. In the name of Jesus, oh my God, oh my God, no man can curse the one you have blessed. We are a blessed of God. Rende di la mahasa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Come on, somebody. Begin to thank God for your victory. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Put your hand together. Put your hand together. There's victory. There's victory. There's victory. There's victory. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do better than that. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise. There's victory this morning. There's victory this morning. Hallelujah. Marata baba baba sayata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come on, say amen. I said shout amen. One second, shout amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. We are victors in Jesus' name. You are unlockable. You are unbewitchable. Unstoppable in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Wow. Let's appreciate God for our papa, for such a revelation, such a message. It's so, it's timely. Hallelujah. You don't need to miss this coming Wednesday. Papa is still continuing. Our pastor, is, if you missed last time, don't miss this time. Because you need to be part of this. You need to learn more. You need to get know about, to, uh, to know more about witchcraft. So on Wednesday, we are waiting for all of us to be here. Let us all make it a point. Make time and come here on Wednesday. Amen. Amina. So, yes, unless if you came to stay for the second service. First service is done. Let's prepare to switch to the second service. If you're a visitor, please, if you're a visitor, put up your hand. Put up your hand if it's your first time to visit with us. There's a visitor here. There's more there. More people have come. Come on, people. Appreciate the visitors in the house here. Thank you for coming. Amen. I request, I humbly request, don't just go now because I have Nalongo Taka is coming right there. Can you please march and go where they're going to find you? Yes. And those who have never been baptized, we are going to baptize you today after the second service. So go and pick your changing clothes. We have a pool there. We are just waiting for you to be baptized. So prepare yourself. God bless you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Visitors, please go and.